Comic Con at home with Bluefin Bandai Namco Collectibles. Hope you guys are staying safe inside. Uh, it's a little weird, you know, being outside instead of inside, just crammed to the gills, uh, just surrounded by people, just wanting to buy all your stuff. Uh, but before we start with this great panel, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody to go to bluefinbrands.com slash SDCC for all of our special deals and promotions. You can see some of them, sorry, everything's backwards, some of them floating up in the sky over there. We have some great deals on Illumination Gallery, on Transformers, uh, some amazing Dragon Ball figure bundles. Uh, and we're going to talk a lot about figures today because we have two very special guests. Uh, we have D Amazing himself. How are you doing today, Darius? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm just living the dream. Not uh, not stuck in the convention center. <laughs> we, all know uh, and, uh, <laughs> we also have Jared. Jared is the brand manager for Storm Collectibles at Bandai Namco Collectibles. How are you doing, Jared? I'm doing quite well. It's been a busy, busy week. You know, even though we're not physically in San Diego, we are still doing the San Diego shindig. And, um, you know, it's just been a busy week here. Yeah. It's actually been one year. I met Darius at San Diego Comic-Con last year under oh, sure. less than stellar circumstances. <laughs> so, I mean, we was all taken care of. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a stressful time. Um, it is. But, uh, but Darius, but D. Tell me all about how you got into this incredible world of just toy photography, and where did your love for action figures and toys begin? Um, well, I read a lot of comics, and uh, we played a lot of video games, and being a New Yorker, uh, I'm pretty sure anybody watching this that's from New York would know that the Chinatown Arcade played a huge part in growing up as a New Yorker. So you had games like Tekken, there was Mortal Kombat, there were all the classic games, there were Ghouls and Ghosts, there was a bunch of things you can choose from. And um, if you talk to anybody at Storm, they'll make fun of me for being a very, uh, a video game had like the classic stuff. So it's it's crazy that Storm is doing a bunch of fighting video game stuff, knowing that the Chinatown Arcade was a big deal for New Yorkers. Um, between that and reading comics and knowing that these toys would somehow, you know, help quell that, that thirst for heaven and stuff, I started to buy it. And then uh, I joined the group ACBA about 10 years ago and I learned about action figure photography through them. And then I, I my love for it grew exponentially and I just kept going from there. So I never stopped at that point. Nice. Now, has your love for action figures and uh, toys and collectibles changed since you, you kind of transitioned from, you know, just it being a fun hobby to something you take a little more serious? Yeah, I can absolutely say that. Um, the, the funny thing is you mentioned that it's grown in a more positive way. Well, even though I take it serious, uh, how do I say it? Uh, I take it serious, but I, I make sure it's serious fun because it, it should never be one of those things where it's stressful. Collecting as a whole should be a the opposite of stressful. So taking pictures of them, and even though I take it seriously and I'll like have collaborations and jobs with it, it's still one of those things where I've always had a great time with it. Sitting down and having memories or even creating those memories through photography has been fantastic and I love it. Nice. Now, Jared, you, uh, you're one of our main figure brand managers at uh, Bandai Info Collectibles. Uh, and I know you're a huge collector as well. Uh, you know, where did your love and uh, your your passion for action figures and collectibles and figures start? Um, well, I've pretty much been into collectibles since I'm basically like 10 years old. I've collected, you know, Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, all of the stuff from the 90s, really. Um, and then, you know, as I got older, I, I sort of, you know, stopped collecting all that stuff. And then sort of after college, um, I think is when the collectible industry started to pick up again. And I started to, I one day I just randomly went to a comic book store and I saw this amazing uh, Predator figure, a Hot Toys actually, and I was just blown away by it, the detail. And so I was like, you know what, I just graduated college, I'm going to spoil myself, you know, treat myself to this. And I did. And that honestly was what got me hooked. Um, I, I took it home, I opened it up and I was like, oh my God, this is in incredible. And then I basically went online, I started doing some more research, I was like, what else is out there? And then I started to go down a deep, dark hole. And um, one thing led to another, and I started getting more and more figures. And then um, I, I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan, and I got into the figure arts. And being from New York uh, as well, um, I volunteered at New York Comic Con, and that's sort of where I got my foot in the door. And then everything kind of picked up from there. And then um, here I am as a brand manager working for an action figure company. So really awesome. It's come full circle. It has, really, yeah. <laughs> so would both of you say you're, like, you're, you're working like a dream job, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Bluefin for six years. I mean, for me, uh, it's it's crazy because I don't even consider it a, a job because one, it's not steady. <laughs> it's more like, does anyone need me? Yeah, but will anybody hire me? 
that's that's a bigger deeper question but um it's it's still a hobby for me because as much as i would love to get paid full time for it that's not the case yet but if that time comes i'm i'm sure i'll take it 100% absolutely now Darius, do you remember uh well, i guess we'll, we'll go we'll go there later what is is there a line or a specific uh, uh, property that you just have to collect everything you're just passionate about? Like, I have to have every NECA Ninja Turtle. I have to have every Storm Mortal Kombat figure. Is there is there a line, or do you kind of just pick what you like? There's actually three lines. There's three lines I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest about, uh, and that's because the, it's all personal for me. But the number one is a uh, Kamen Rider. I'm gonna always collect SH Figures Kamen Rider. Uh, my brother got me into Kamen Rider as a young kid, watching uh, V3 and Kamen Rider Black. And then I got to Kuga as myself as a young adult. Uh, I was in, I, what was I doing? I was, wow, I was in college. So yeah, just started college when Kuga came out. So yeah, so Kamen Rider, I must have every single one. Like I gotta have them. And then uh, it's gonna be the Storm Collectibles, not just the Mortal Kombat line, but the Street Fighter line. Because again, if we're going back to Chinatown arcade days, it's Street Fighter and King of Fighters for me. Those are the main two lines. And then last but not least, is gonna be the Mexico Toy stuff because uh, I have a long history with them. We, we just go way back, like almost 20 years. Nice, all right. What about you, Jared? Is there, is there you, you mentioned the Predator hot toys that just kind of sucked you back into this world. Uh, is there anything that uh, you're passionate about that you, you know, day one purchase, gotta have this line or this, uh, this specific property? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of stick to like four or five main IPs. Uh, you can kind of see behind me over here, uh, Ninja Turtles is, is one for, is one for me. I'm a huge Ninja Turtle fan. I pretty much collect every brand that there is. So, um, uh, you know, NECA, Super 7, um, Playmates, um, the, some of the, you know, more off-brand companies. Um, Sci-fi stuff, so Alien and Predator is, like, huge for me. I just love those character designs. Uh, on the anime front, uh, Dragon Ball, for sure. I have, like, every figure arts ever. And um, even from, like, Bandai America, um, and, and the model kits as well. Um, and then I'm a big, a big McFarlane fan. I love Spawn. I have a huge Spawn collection. And um, then I just sort of collect, you know, kind of, you know, anything that I just love also. So, you know, um, Marvel, DC. I'm not, like, huge into it. I don't collect every character, but, you know, sort of, like, the, the favorites. Awesome. And that's kind of it. Sweet. Now, now, Darius, you take incredible pictures. I'm assuming it's just a skill that you've learned over just years of trial and error. Um, yeah, you know, I take a picture and like my thumbs in it and like that's focused on something in the distance and it's just not working. Uh, you know, when was the when was was there an aha moment that you realized like, hey, I'm pretty good at this. Um, you know, personally, I still don't think I'm good at it. <laughs> that, that, that's honestly me personally. Like, I still don't think I'm good at it because there's always things that I can do that I feel like I can do better. So I'm constantly trying to improve. But I guess if you if you want to say what I thought that I was decent at it, I'm gonna say like five years ago when I started to really work with lighting and I started to really like shoot on manual. That's when I was like, okay, I feel like I'm finally like good at this. Where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just do my best and work with something that's original and try to always bring something new to the table. So even if I'm like doing the same thing or revisiting something, I want to make sure it's better than whatever I did last time. So yeah, I'm, I'm always aiming to improve. Now, was there a uh, one, once you got decent at it, which we'll consider amazing at it. <laughs> um, what, once you got to that level um, and you started to kind of invest in yourself, was there a certain piece of gear or anything like a like a you know like a Luma box or any kind of like lighting kit or something like that that really yeah. elevated to the next level that you would recommend for people who are trying to get serious in the game? Actually, yeah. Give me one second. I'm gonna bring it over. And I'm gonna show people because I actually get asked this question a lot. So I'm gonna visually show people. Very nice. I mean, your name is D Amazing, not D Decent. You know what? I kind of want to change to that just because. <laughs> <laughs> At D Decent. Exactly. D Decent. So Double this, D. <laughs> so this is a Proline Venue uh, uh, stage light. I use these as my background lights. These are my source of light that give me that vibrant uh, colors. So it's yellow, blues, purples, greens. I have two of these set in the background. What I did was I did a lot of studying on light and how light reflects off certain characters and how you either have a background and foreground. So between these and my daylight bulbs that just, they're regular daylight bulbs, energy efficient, they help set the tone for how I shoot my shots. So between this and my camera, uh, 
these have been wonderful and have definitely set me apart from other people. So yeah, and I was actually shown this by someone on on Instagram called Just the Jive. He actually brought this to my attention and he helped teach me, which helped me get better. So shout out to him for that. I do appreciate you. If you're listening, I know you are. Thank you for real. Awesome. Now, you know, there was the uh, the rating there. Now we have a collecting takes up a lot of space, you know, and if you're doing this as, you know, something more of a hobby and you have to have just all the different figures, you know, what do you do as far as like space goes? I see your little, your little lab behind you. What, yeah, I've uh, got a dedicated room in the house to it um, because my wife will kick me out otherwise at this point. Um, so if I didn't dedicate this room uh, to it, I, I promise you I wouldn't be collecting anymore because my wife would kick me out. <laughs> I'm going to put emphasis on that. She means it. Um, if you are uh, one of those people who are running out of space like I have, uh, it comes to a point where you have to decide on whether or not you're going to keep boxes or dump boxes. And that is very important for a lot of collectors. Because dumping boxes mean you don't plan on selling it ever. You plan on keeping that forever. So a lot of the time, I dump my boxes because I don't plan on selling some. At least I try not to. So unfortunately, I used to get two of everything so that I would do that. Open one up, tear the box up, and enjoy myself. And then I keep one in box just in case anything happens, if it breaks or something like that. Or if I had to sell it, I would. But I always try to keep one out of box, one in box. Uh, but that's not really working out anymore. So... <laughs> I don't know what to tell anybody anymore because at some point you have to go, something's got to go. So now my new policy is uh, that I've been trying to do lately is if it doesn't bring me any sort of recent joy or I don't feel myself taking pictures of it soon, like within the next six months, I go, okay, you got to find a new home. That way you can make somebody else happy. Even if it's a rare item, I try to make other people happy by selling my older stuff. Yeah. And that's a great thing to do is, uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to collect for a home my whole life as well. And, like Maria Kondo and you, if it doesn't spark joy with me, you know, sometimes it just has to go because my wife is uh, the same way. I got one room, and if I start spilling out of that room, then it becomes a problem. Yep. Uh, and I'm starting to spill out of that room. So uh, <laughs> what, I, what I've noticed is there's just so many, uh, especially like young kids or people trying to get into the hobby, that, you know, uh, if you just, a lot of stuff I've just been giving to them just to see, like, how much pleasure it gave them because this figure gave me so much joy. And especially, you know, I collect Star Wars figures. And so I remember going to Target and going to Walmart and going to all these places, trying to like find these like rare figures when like episode two and three came out. Uh, and so, but I still have those memories. I have the memories of almost getting in a fight with someone at a Target over a Darth Maul, uh, Darth Maul and uh, his little speeder bike. And like, I had it in my hand. I was walking around Target to buy it. And the guy said, I took it from him. I'm like, I did what? <laughs> I took it off the shelf. And uh, just this insane drama that happened in Target. And I always have that memory and it's a fond memory now because I didn't get murdered by this guy. But, you know, you know, collecting is just, you know, we all remember collecting it. That's what brought us the joy. You know, if you're just sitting on the shelf getting dust from me, I'm like, yeah, maybe someone else will take joy from it. Exactly how I feel. It's, it's funny you have that kind of memory about the, the, the guy with things. I think, I think back to the prequels, I always go, there was a lot of fighting during the prequel, like for people. And I'm like, I remember those days. Like Toys R Us was, ooh, it was a war zone. <laughs> Those midnight launches. <laughs> yeah, it was a <laughs> war zone. What about you, Jared? Where, I, where do you stand? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I, I second the um, the sentiment about um, getting rid of boxes. Uh, all of my a lot of my figures are now just in Ziploc bags, and I just have one giant box, you know, labeled by franchise essentially. So it's like all alien stuff, all t turtle stuff, and um, I just get rid of the boxes. I, I do keep boxes. Um, for like you know figure arts you know kind of the more the the, the higher end stuff but yeah. um you know if it's like a clamshell box because they you know they take up so much space um it's got to go so and then yeah i've just been you know at this point you know i think every collector nowadays has like no space left so you really just gotta pick and choose your battles with what you want to collect and keep and so yeah i've just been really focusing on my absolute favorites and letting go of the other ones would you rotate them out jared what was that? What's that? I was saying, do you rotate out your uh, your collection, Jared, or do you have? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just get bored of looking at the same thing, so you just you know put that away and then bring out some old stuff. Like I I bring out stuff from like 2015, and I forgot how amazing it was. You know, like I was like, damn. Like I just recently brought out some Gremlins, you know, from the, the NECA Gremlins, and like the detail in those things are crazy. So I was like, wow, I forgot how good these are. And then um, you know, just and you can put them in a fun, you know, comical type of pose, and yeah. 
So yeah, you, I think you got. I think you have to because if if you're short on space, you just gotta keep rotating it. Give yourself a project to do for a weekend or something. That's exactly what, what I'm saying. Sorry to cut you off. No, I was saying. I was saying. I agree with Jared. Where I constantly rotate displays, so I try to stick to it. Every thirty days, there has to be a new display. That way, even if I'm not taking pictures of it, I'm kind of enjoying it just by being out. So there's one day I devote. I'll take a Sunday, change around all the displays in the house. So. All this place got to change. Which reminds me that day is coming soon because July is almost up. <laughs> so I got to figure out what I'm going to do this month. What do you guys do about dust? So I'm always having to, you know, because I, I, I have a lot of my fingers out and loose and stuff like that. What do you do is to get dust off? There you go. I have that. Or he has that. So this is what I used. Yeah. So a brush? See, it's funny you mention that because I used my wife's makeup brush and she murdered me for it. Now I bought my own. Um, <laughs> because when you have stuff standing around, you definitely use the brush. And when you want to clean out like the, the glass displays, like detox, I just use this. Because yeah. this, will, it'll get about most of the dust. And dust that are on figures, you just, you know, just go down and wipe down. Yeah, I think you need a certain size brushes for certain figures. Like the one I just showed is kind of big, you know, more for the bigger figures. But like some of the more fragile ones, you need like one of those little skinny paint brushes. And but yeah, the dust I would say is probably every collector's bane. You know, yeah. it's just a it, nightmare. There's now like uh, like the um, the dust proof cases, but they're like eight hundred dollars. And I was tempted. I was like, man, I really want to test one of these because I keep hearing about them. They don't let any dust in. But I'm like, for 800 bucks to, to test out dust, I'm like, I don't think I can do that. So instead, I'm going to hope for that, that they do a smaller one, maybe like a $200 one, and I'll test it. If they do and it works, then then I'll go $800. <laughs> $800 buys a lot of that spray. <laughs> a lot, it a sure it does. does. <laughs> this is only three bucks. Nice. Now, uh, you know, we've all had to explain our collections sometimes to people who are not in the know. So I collect Admiral Akbar, as you can. And uh, it... Uh, it uh, gets a lot of odd looks from people who are like, you collect the fish guy from Return of the Jedi who's been was on screen for like two minutes. Uh, uh, Darius, has there, ever, has there ever been a moment where, you know, you brought a friend over or, you know, your wife had someone over or, you know, something someone came over who just didn't get it and they're like, looked in your, looked in your, in your, in your, in your lab and was like, what, what's, what's going on here? Um, at first, yeah. And that was definitely with uh, anything Kamen Rider because they would always call it Power Rangers. And... Of course, it's it's funny at first, but then you go like, oh, I have to explain this again. And then at some point, you just give up. You're just like, okay, it's really Japanese power rangers, you know, because they'll always come over and go, what is this? this is like, it's a great example. I love this Power Ranger, and it's like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm, okay. And you just you just shake your head and you go about it, you know. There's not much you can do about it. But this, people who don't know, that's fine. You can correct them and learn. And then people just don't care, you know. But most of the time, people actually want to learn. So, like, they'll, my wife will, if she asks, when, when people used to come over, um, <laughs> is um, she would show them, like, the room and stuff. And they would go, oh, this is actually really nice. Because I would, like, leave stuff set up overnight. So they would be, like, me working on a photo shoot. And she'd be like, wow, this, like, looks really good. This, I didn't know people could do this. And that's kind of, like, how I got a bunch of people into it. And they'll, they'll actually, like, my wife's friends actually follow my toy page. And they go, wow, like, this is, I've seen this in person. This is actually a lot of work. This is real art. And I appreciate that more people are coming around to that. It's actually been a great experience to, like, be a part of that. Nice. What about you, Jared? Have you ever to uh, explain, uh, explain your collection to anybody? Uh, my mom. She's always giving me crap. <laughs> Uh, she, 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 she doesn't get it. You know, she's like, don't you have enough? That's always what she says. Don't you have enough? How many of the same character do you need and stuff? And it, you know, it's like it's hard to it's hard to to justify because I, I get it, you know, from her point of view. But you know, when when you have different when you have five or six different forms of Goku, you need them all. You know, that's just the completionist, you know, the perfectionist in you. And um, you know, it's just like a lot of companies do different iterations of the characters. And you know, like Ninja Turtle, there's so many artistic renditions of the characters. So to me, they're all awesome. And so like I want to have all of them like re represented. So. Um, it's definitely tough, but you know, for the most part, they get it. You know, I always say, you know, I was like, would you rather me just be spending my money on like drugs or something like that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, she's like, all right, and um, yeah, it's just it's a it's a genuine passion. You know, it's kind of the only thing I really spend you know my 
you know, leisurely money on anyway. So, yeah. I mean, you know what you could do? You could always show her the 40 year old virgin. That movie is still a great representation of what she could do with your collection later. <laughs> she decides to go. But yeah, I mean, I, I always tell that to her too. I always let her know that, you know, these things, they, for the most part, they appreciate in value. So if I ever did want to get rid of them, I mean, everything I have, I love, and I genuinely feel like I was, I'll keep forever. Um, but if, you know, if that ever did come to a point where I did want to get rid of it, you know, I think it would be um, to my financial benefit anyway. So. I mean, even without the benefit, most of the time you can sell it back and make back exactly what you paid for it. Yeah, at the so very you, least. Yeah. You can you at least always break even and go, I want a clean slate out. I mean, none of us have actually do that. But <laughs> we can go, all right, if we want it out, I mean, we can get out. But would we really? No. I don't think so. No. We'll all come back. Yeah, my wife one time, I was in the other room listening to her explain my collection to one of her friends or something who was coming over for something. And uh, it was very nice how she explained. She was like, well, you know, everybody's got something, you know, it's, this is just his thing. He likes Admiral Akbar. <laughs> She's, then like, she had to explain who Admiral Akbar was. And it was, it was adorable to listen to her. Well, he's like this, like, like squid fish guy who was in, like, a Star Wars movie. And, like, he says it's a trap. <laughs> and it was just, it was endearing that she was, it would have been easy for her to say, oh, that's my husband. He's a geek. But, uh, but for her to actually kind of. Kind of step to and like be, be have my back was uh, was kind of endearing. I knew I picked the right right, right woman. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Uh, now, now, when it comes to posing, you know that's you know how much of a great photo is the actual image you capture versus you know the pose and the setting. What does what does posing put into it? What does you know the backdrop put into it? What does lighting put into it? And then you know maybe what's the post production process look like? You know I'm sure there's many steps to taking a great photo. Okay, I mean, my process is a little different. Um, I actually put a lot of work into the pre-production part, which is the the background, the setting, the lighting, then the posing. I actually don't edit my photos at all, mostly because I don't know how. I've never actually learned how to do that kind of stuff. So <laughs> everything is a hard work before for me. So I'll put in, like I have a setup now, but I actually took down most of it, but uh, I'm gonna post those pictures in a bit. But just like uh, you guys can see here, uh, posing and the setting actually make a big thing for me. So a great example is I have Sagat right here, right? Which, oh, let me try to sense this camera. Sagat posed up, very neat, very nice. Uh, I got to fix this in a way it doesn't look like the little things like this, like fixing the ball pegs to make sure it doesn't look or show out too much. The the right expression, the, the body anatomy, the body language, all of that stuff is really important to me. So that way, if I decided to just stand them a nice lot behind them, choose the character depth, like how far I want to focus in and out on them, and take the picture. Once all of this is done, taking the picture is the easy part because I actually enjoy this process the most. So even if I wanted to sit down and like change it out, let's try to do one of the guys really high uh, Muay Thai things. So get the legs out. Oops, some stuff. We'll change the torso up. And I know a lot of people are like going to watch, like, how does he do it? Like, this is the process. So like you study like the kicks and things like that. But most of the time when a person is kicking or at least one that you've seen in like a movie poster or actually doing anything, you'll actually get the arm up, the leg up. And usually the, if the right leg is up, the left arm will come up towards the head and you'll see the position in which they pose. Oops, let me try to sit there, there we go. So things like that. But I'm gonna fix this arm a little bit. I don't like the way it looks on camera. But things like this are why. So even if you wanted to do like a roundhouse version, or just an outward kick version, or a forward lateral, certain things you choose with your program. It's really hard because I'm trying to mimic myself as I see myself. It's a little weird for me now. But uh, there's a lot of things that go into posing. Oh, look, I forgot right there. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it's hard when I'm on camera. I'm a little nervous, but. No problem. And everything's backwards on the camera too. It's left with it right is. Here, but... It's really messing with me. I'm like, why am I backwards? <laughs> well, that's so, that's incredible. So you mentioned backgrounds and like uh, backdrops and dioramas. Uh, now, do you have just like a collection uh, of like generic backdrops that you can swap in and out? And I actually do go to diorama makers and have stuff custom made. I've worked with a ton of people. <gasps> um, one of them you see right. You see again that reverse thing is messing with. Me. Uh, <laughs> You'll see right here, I have one of the biggest dioramas I've ever had made, which is a clock tower. This was made by my friend, Chris Gumpton. I have a lot of stuff in it now because I'm constantly rotating things out. There's even stuff behind me with more dioramas. 
And if you look on the shelf, even more dioramas and trees and things like that. I constantly have stuff made because um, in reality, I like my settings. I like having a different setting. And there's nothing wrong with having the same one over and over, but I like to set the mood. Like for instance, in Street Fighter, or uh, even Mortal Kombat, that's a great example of Mortal Kombat. There's a stage with uh, the horror trees, the Mortal Kombat, you know, that everyone knows and loves, you know it. So even if I don't have the horror tree faces, just having trees set up a certain way with a certain light, people know the ambiance is that of Mortal Kombat almost instantly. You know, it, it, it triggers a memory with you. So that way it, it sets the setting for you. You know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing. And that's the kind of stuff I enjoy. Where even if it's like a, a medieval background, they have like a more of a castle brick and mortar vibe or a dirt road. Like if you can set the mood for your photos, when you pose it up, it just feels better. It, it sort of feels like it's at home. Yeah. Kind of like we yeah, all are now. That's, yeah, that's really what I think Collectibles does for us. You know, it reminds us of either you know a childhood memory or it reminds us of a moment in a film or a TV show or something. And it evokes that emotional response in you. And I think that's that's why we just have to have it. <laughs> yeah. Now, Jared, um, you, you have the collection, but are, are you have you ever thought about getting into photography or is it just uh, too much too hard? Um, no, it's not an area I've ever really delved in. I, I'm just more of um, an onlooker and really appreciating the work that everyone else does. Um, I'm happy with that. Um, I don't really I'm, I'm sure I could, you know, learn it. Um, but time is of the essence. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, um, being the onlooker, but, um, you guys do some incredible work. Honestly, I think, um, Darius, some of your photography was some of the first I've ever seen. And like when I, I, when I really realized that action figure photography was even a thing, I remember, you know, you have a lot of uh, like vivid colors in the background, which I always found really unique, um, in combination with the beautiful poses, the very natural looking poses and, um, you know, a couple with the dioramas, I just always thought that was such a great thing. And then, you know, again, with the, kind of delving into the the industry, I just realized, wow, a lot of people are doing this. It's some really incredible stuff. And so, um, yeah, but yeah, as far as me personally, no, I don't take any figure other than the cell phone picture. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think uh, that's what I started, started somewhere like that. So I think uh, that's kind of where it's fun. Like even me, I mean, the way I started was green, green silk like paper and just my cell phone my iphone at the time it was like the iphone 2 or something so we've come a long way a long time and we're just gonna keep on going yeah now now you had mentioned all the practical things you put into your actual dioramas and your, and your, and your settings do you think that adds to like the visceral feel of it you know a lot of people that are using you know it's almost like the prequels versus <laughs> versus the original trilogy for star wars you know the tactile feeling of the original trilogy versus, you know, kind of the CGI over-reliance on CGI of the prequels. Um, do you feel that that helps you out, that you're doing everything in camera and not so much post-production? No, I think that uh, everybody kind of brings something different to the table. And my style is, I guess, it would be more practical, only because I, I don't know how to do it. So I admire those with the editing skills to make it look really good. There are a lot of people who I know that, that do that very well. There's, there's I have Watu. There's Yasuke 79, there's Sergeant Bananas. There are actually a ton of people I know who do fantastic work that do like editing. And I'm like, I'm amazed by it because the equal amount of time that I put in to make it practical, they've done that same thing with editing because everybody has their draws and their strengths and their weaknesses. Mine's, my strength is actually doing it more practically because editing is, is impossible for me, where it, it may be different for those people. You know what I mean? So I just try to achieve it the way I know it. But I'm, I mean, I'm always open to learning. It's just that I, it's like Jerry said, it actually takes a lot of time. So it, it's not easy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and one of the things that I really like about toy photography, and I saw uh, we had played a, a clip of you posing um, on uh, from Instagram, is I love when the toy photographers show like the behind the scenes stuff, you know, of how this came to be. And, you know, they show, you know, like them posing and putting it in a setting or, you know, if it's going to be something where they have explosion effects or something like that, they have a, a real fun behind the scenes. Um, you know, so, so Jared, you know, as someone who appreciates the picture, are you also interested in like what it took to make this picture as well? Is that something that interests you too? Um, yeah, I'm always fascinated by like what actually goes into, you know, the, the work that these guys are doing. And, um, you know, if it has accessories, if it has, 
you know, relevant accessories that are, you know, important to the character. Um, it's always awesome to see them utilized um, in that particular, you know, project. Um, I'm always amazed by like, you know, you mentioned um, Sergeant Bananas, like I, he does like that crazy, you know, where he'll, he'll hit like a sand pile and like kind of slow it down and get that per picture perfect moment where like a sand trooper is running through the sand and it looks like, you know, there's a battlefield. Um, that's, that's amazing. Like I never even imagined, like I would have never thought about that until I seen it, you know? Yeah. And, and that, that was done is like, and what's crazy is how he showed how he did it because it's stuff like that. I would have never thought about doing it. And it's just, that's something he does in camera and both a little bit after editing, like editing out the stands. I'm like little things like that just go such a long way that I never would have thought about doing. So, so Darius, what kind of advice would you give you? So, Jared has just, you, we've changed his mind. He now wants to be a toy photographer. What's the yep. first bit of advice you would give him? You know, I, I think a lot of people would assume, you know, that they would freak out and be like, okay, gotta have all the best gear, gotta do this, which I'm assuming is the wrong advice. <laughs> what yes, advice would you give to Jared? Um, the, the actual real first advice I would give you is don't get discouraged because you see other people doing it and you feel like they're better. Don't ever get discouraged by that. Because honestly, like I said, I started off at a point where I was absolutely abysmal. I was terrible. And look at where I am now. It, it won't happen overnight. You should take your time and enjoy yourself. And if you want to learn from people, asking questions will get you answers. Like, don't be scared to ask people for help. I think that's one of the things that uh, it was kind of a thing in the community that people were scared to do. But now everyone's asking. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of people putting out videos. There's a lot of people uh, who are holding seminars and doing streams, that kind of stuff is great. Even I'm gonna start doing more of that. I do a, uh, I do stuff called Plastic Parties over on YouTube where I try to help people with posing and lighting and sourcing this stuff. So we're all trying to do something to help people and I think that's where you should start. If you feel like equipment wise, you may need something, uh, you can never go wrong with a, with a very large piece of construction paper and a daylight bulb, you know, or, or two. Like that's honestly how I started. And to be honest, even without the stage lights, I use that very same setup. Like, I, I'm using the same setup for almost 10 years. Nice. Yeah, and, and you mentioned, uh, you know, reaching out to the community. And one of the things I've noticed over the last you know, year or so is just how amazing the toy photography community is. You know, you have the amazing, you know, you have Sergeant Bananas, you know, you have some newcomers like Black Series, uh, uh, Squid Picks, you know, you have Alex from Toy Arc, all these people that take such amazing photos. And you guys are all just nice. You guys are all just like a community, like just helping each other out and like, you know, pitching in and trying to make everyone better. It's not this cutthroat world that of like Vanity Fair photos. <laughs> I, um, you know I, I'm glad that people like us are going, it shouldn't be anyone left out. I mean, my policy is nobody should be left out, left behind when it comes to that. I think it should be, you know, first of all, there's more than enough room for everybody to have fun. Like there may not be enough figures for everyone and that part does suck. So hopefully that will change. But more than enough times, there is a figure for everyone where you can go, I want this. Uh, I want to take it a certain way. I can enjoy it. And people will appreciate it. I mean, that's the point. The point is I'm sharing my art with you. You're sharing your art with me. And we're all learning something from it. That's the way it should be, honestly. Nice. Now, now Jared, is there uh, an underserved niche mm -hmm. in uh, toy photography that uh, you see an opening for an aspiring toy photographer like yourself? Or, 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 is, or is everyone just covering everything? Um, I'm sure there's something that we that we're not thinking of, but um, I think what's coming up lately is um, the stop motion stuff. You know, people are doing some incredible work with stop motion, and um, I know it's it's a it's a more technical you know uh, talent or skill, um, but I'm seeing a lot of people do that now. So that's probably something that could be tapped into. Not by me, but um, whoever's you know whoever has the patience. I know that it involves a lot of pictures. You know, speaking of photography, I know that you know the better it is, the more pictures you have per second. And so, um, yeah, has that something you ever got uh, dabbled into, Darius? I have tried it, and it consumes way too much time that I, I don't have. And um, I want to, I want to try it more often. But after watching my friends who uh, who do stop motion, I'm just like, oh. You guys, man, like people don't understand, like the stop motion guys deserve a lot more credit than they're getting. They really do because they have to do, first of all, they have to know what I know with posing. Then they also have to know editing stuff too. So they are literally the perfect blend of what everyone wants 
and they're giving it to you in a, in a like an animation format. Uh, yes. If you think about even the robot chicken guys, you're like, that's basically what stop motion guys are doing. And that's a lot of work, even for like a, a two minute clip. That is a lot of work. So I think those guys deserve a ton of applause and credit. I mean, it, it, they do phenomenal work. It's also animation too. You know, they also add like animation for like blast effects and. Yeah, exactly. So they, they, they have to know just about everything. They're the jack of all trades in this. Yeah. So. Um, so Jared, how is. How is oh, I'm sorry. How is that's okay. I was gonna say, Jared. So, how is uh, how has being a collector changed since you know it kind of became your career to to, to work in the collectible space? Has it has it uh, made your life easier because you kind of know how the, how the sausage is made, or is it uh, you know just uh, kind of a fun little peek behind the curtain? Um, well, I, I've I now know more than I ever have, obviously. A lot of people, you know, I don't think understand like licensing. Like that plays a huge role. You know, in the collectibles industry, there are things that you can and cannot do. Um, there are places you can and cannot sell into. And so I think that maybe there should be a bit more um, understanding from the community as to where these things, you know, why, you know, the companies have everyone's best interest in mind. And I think that um, people just need to understand that there are certain restrictions that are in place, you know, for, for collectibles, basically, you know, um, some company may have the master rights and another one may not. And so as a result, you know, it becomes really difficult to get. Um, that's one aspect. Um, you know, working with um, you know just press now is really interesting. There's so many different facets. You know, tie-ins to content. You know, movie premieres like is really important. So timing of you know scheduling is really important. Um, and then just you know the actual production of a figure itself is like really involved. I never really realized like it goes into it with the tooling and the sculpting, approvals, uh, paint. Um, articulation, Q, QC, there's so many things that go into it. And it really makes me appreciate the art form essentially even more. You know, it's it's a lot more than what, you know, you just see on the shelf. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it behind the scenes. For sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think uh, for me, it's the, the information gap is always, you know, kind of something I think is frustrating for the fans. It's like, well, you guys know, why don't you tell us? And, you know, like, just us not being able to unveil things right away. They're like, well, do you know? I'm like, well, yeah, I know, but I can't say it. <laughs> so it gets a little harder. Those NDAs, man, those NDAs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, NDA and licensors, those are, those are, those are, those are things. Um, yeah. So Darius, what is, if, God forbid, I don't want this to happen, there was a fire, okay? Knock on wood, knock on everything. I don't want this to happen. If there was a fire, you can say if one figure in that room, what's the what's the figure you're gonna save? It, it's funny you mention a fire because I've had two floods in this room. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad, bad for saying it. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, honestly, uh, at this point, I'm not gonna save anything. Why save one when when you know? Why choose? You gotta let it all go. That way, you you burn it all down and you start fresh. Um, but just to you know. Just to appease everybody who wants to ask this question, if I'm going to save one figure, it's always going to be Kamen Rider Cougar. Actually, no, I, I'm wrong. For once, it's not going to be Cougar. I'm going to save my custom me. <laughs> That's really awesome you have that, by the way. I, I always get a kick out of that when I see your your mini yeah. me. Yeah, I love this thing, man. So I'm going to uh, save custom me. If I'm really going to I'm going to save custom me. I think it's funny when you say, um, when you do a size comparison uh, and you put uh, next to me, you know, it's yeah. this big. It's funny. I like place. Look, it's one of those things where uh, I know it sounds crazy to have a mini version of yourself, but I'm like, as a collector, who the hell wouldn't want a mini version of themselves with their action figure? Like, you, why not? You two talk amongst yourself for like 30 seconds. You show ahead, your, right, your right. figure. I'm going to show you my figure. See, look, see, <laughs> see, David has one too. But I mean, I, I'm I'm slacking. I don't have one, unfortunately. Nah, you got to get one, Jared. You got to get one. Have a two. That you can like fight predators with or run away from predators or just be involved with gremlin this yo man this this is fun so shout out I to wanna, for making i want to i want to um get my head put it on one of those thousand toys you know because they got those amazing articulated bodies oh man put, like a, a trench mean, coat on oh you'll have a great time do it i say it'd be hilarious <laughs> man do it like get find a guy who's 3d printed and get one made trust me oh, oh. Look at tiny david. <laughs> i got a tiny david <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. 
But see, is it not cool to have Tiny David hanging out with a bunch of your action figures? It's it's pretty cool. You can hang out with Godzilla here for a minute. Yeah, he, he needs to uh, run from Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I know no one wanted to see a Tiny David, but uh, I have one too. Honestly, I, man, want, I wanted to see one. No, nah, I, <laughs> I love when people have those, man, for real. I think that's kind of great because then it's one of those things. I think having a tiny version of you is a testament to you not just loving action figures, but you loving your interaction with your own action figures. Like, yeah, even so if it's not it, imagine, like, you want to hang out with, like I said, you want to hang out with Predator, or you want to battle Godzilla because you're a 50 foot version of yourself, or even, like, you know, roll out with Optimus Prime. You never know what you want to do, but now you can do it because you have those options. Most people That's don't realize, right. like, if you had a tiny, like, imagine it wasn't a tiny version of you. Imagine it was real life you and your Optimus came to life. Would you not want to hang out with him? I mean, look, that's the way I see it. And you're 100 percent right. See, <laughs> so now we gotta get Jared. Jared, you got, we gotta get you one. So you, uh, you, you're left out here. I know. We're gonna, we're gonna get him on a synthetic human. I know. <laughs> I got the, I got the body. I just need the head sculpt. That's all. And then I'll I get some know. clothes. I'm gonna, just, I'm just gonna call him synthetic Jared from now on. That'd be, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Super articulated. I can do some yoga poses. Exactly. Like, wait, yeah, my, Mine was made by my buddy Randy. Uh, this is from our first feature film that we ever directed, and uh, this is me. It, me from that film. It's a cameo, so it's actually actually an action figure from a movie. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, and so he actually did like the whole cast, and so like my my Giants jersey is actually cloth, and uh, it's 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 pretty incredible what he did. I was actually wearing my New York Giants hat that day, so he uh, took my New York Giants hat. Since you guys are both New York guys, so see, you know what's up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, we're, we're, we're coming, we're coming to the, to, to near the end here. So what parting words, uh, you know, Darius, would you give us? And, you know, please, by all means, plug every social platform and anything you want to plug, you know, make sure everybody knows where they can find you because your photography is top notch and amazing. And we need more people who have just such a fervor and a passion for collecting that you have. Um, uh, if you're going to plug me, um, on Instagram is D two underscores amazing. You can find me on Instagram there on YouTube. You can find me at D amazing. On Facebook, you can find me at The Amazing Toys. And please also visit my website if you want to feel inspired and check out a bunch of photos. I've actually been sitting the time to update it. The website is d-amazing.net. I have uh, most sections, as you'll see here. Uh, they, you know, I kind of have them sectioned out. So I'll, I'll try to add whatever I can. I've been slowly and slowly updating because uh, I've actually been trying to do more photos and videos and I haven't had time to really update. But I'm, I'm going to get around to it, I promise, I promise. Um, and parting words, I mean, if you guys have enjoyed this, uh, I'm glad you saw it. Um, we actually posted a bunch of upcoming teaser stuff from the catalog of some collectibles. Both Blueprint has showed it and I have showed it on my Instagram. But at the time of posting it, I haven't replied to you guys because we've been here. So um, if you have questions and I have answers or Blueprint has answers, we'll answer as soon as we can. Um, I want to say that I'm super excited because I am a big king second guy. I'm also a big so caliber guy. And with them now announcing these things, I'm super duper excited to see them because King is going to literally body slam everyone in every format for at least a week when I get that toy. I'm telling you that right now. It's going to be King versus Zengi. We're going to have classic, classic fun, wrestling fun. And as far as so caliber goes, I'm really hoping we get a Nightmare and Six Breed, my two favorite characters. Um, and uh, I don't know what else to say except, you know, as always, please be good, do good, and drink the water. Absolutely. Now, Jared, you you manage Storm Collectibles for the U.S. You know, what what can we expect? You know, we've done some reveals. Maybe you can go through real quick. And you know, what what's the future for Storm Collectibles hold? Yeah, so I, I just wanted to sort of yeah. So you know, as a brand manager representing Storm, I want to let you know that you know, we are always reading the comments and we understand the the figures and the video game IPs that you guys are looking for. Um, and we are definitely doing everything that we can to get them to you. Um, you know, this being San Diego Comic Con week, uh, we have some. Um, we've already unveiled some new characters, and we're, you can expect some more throughout the rest of the San Diego Comic Con at Home event. Um, yesterday, you know, we did Motaro, um, which has been receiving phenomenal feedback from the community. Um, he's another big, you know, a big dude from Mortal Kombat that people love, um, similar to Goro and Shao Kahn. Um, we uh, unveiled uh, E-Honda, so you know a lot of people thought that the Street Fighter line was you know, kind of taking a dip. Uh, no, there's still going to be more characters from Street Fighter, so E-Honda uh, looks incredible with his size. 
Um, today, uh, for the first time, we unveiled Dark, our Dark Stalkers, um, Dmitry Maximov, and um, I think that can, um, you know, have people rest assured that there will be other characters um, from that IP. Um, I don't believe there's been a any real collectible action figures from Dark Stalkers, so um, that's pretty exciting. And then, uh, yeah, stay tuned for more as um, you know the Comic Con Home event continues. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you to like all of the consumers out there that like are you know supporting Storm and our other action figure brands that we have. Um, we you know we really appreciate it. And you know, as a collector myself, I I I understand the quality of it, and it's just incredible to see. You know, I never imagined that there would be such incredible video game collectibles out there, and to um, you know have so many, you know, over what it's been like five years now since, you know, Storm has really been um, in the U.S. Um, it's been great to see the, just the depth of the line and the rosters that they're doing. Um, you know, I know that some lines take, you know, longer than others, but just kind of hang in there. Uh, they'll get to it and uh, just keep, you know, giving your feedback and then, you know, we'll, we'll definitely pass along. You know, I'm always perusing, you know, the sites, you know, um, Instagram, social media, all that stuff. So, I definitely um, see it and um, has some information. But yeah, yeah thank Jared, you, everybody. Jared's definitely, Jared's definitely the go-to guy in the office. When, a, when anything figure, we're like, how does these companies handle this? Or what's what's going on in the figure world? Jared's always the first one that everyone goes to. And, uh, you know, it's it's he's just a wealth of knowledge. So definitely hit him up if you have any questions. Uh, from us, you know, make sure you go to bluefinbrands.com slash SDCCC. SDCC, yeah, two C's. <laughs> two C's. <laughs> didn't make sure he gave you three C's. Uh, SDCC, uh, and you can check out all of the exclusives that we have. Uh, all these ones listed here, the Tamashi ones, especially Blue Godzilla. Everyone loves Blue Godzilla. Uh, the Bandai America Dragon Ball exclusives, the Flame Toys, uh, Clear Model Optimus Prime. Uh, and what's really cool about this is that it comes in a collectible metal tin. The front of the tin, the tin has, is translucent, so when you shine a light through it, it looks like the Autobot Matrix of Leadership. It's just so cool. Uh, and we have a pre-order for it. Let's see if I can do it two streams in a row. The the Kuro Kara Curry. I know I messed that up. Black Star Saber <laughs> <laughs> variant. Uh, it's an amazing metal action figure. Uh, it's, it looks so cool. I saw it at New York Toy Fair and I was just instantly in love with it. Uh, and then we have just a ton of promotions, bundles, giveaways, uh, and gift with purchases uh, on this site. So check it out, bluefinbrands.com slash SDCC, uh, or just follow us at bluefinbrands across all the social platforms. And we will have links uh, in descriptions and and pin posts and everything so you can definitely get uh, what you need from us and definitely follow d double underscore amazing on instagram he is putting out some incredible stuff he's too modest to say he's truly amazing like his name says uh if that is decent then there is no there's no definition for the level of bad i am if that is if that is the bar for decent it doesn't go far enough down so so darius thank you so much for joining us uh it was an absolute thrill you know hopefully you stay stay safe you know Wear your mask, drink your water, uh, and uh, until next time, uh, we'll talk to you guys later.